This is chapter 8.3, exercise 11 through 22. The section 8.3 has to do with hyperbolas. And we're going to be looking at the odd number problems mostly. And in exercise 11 through 16, sketch the graph of the hyperbola by hand. And to sketch, we're going to need to take advantage of three things. We're going to find one, the vertices. We're going to find the foci. And we're going to also find the slant asymptotes. And when we find the slant asymptotes, that's going to help guide us to the, the sketch of our hyperbola. And our standard form of a hyperbola equation is this one. We're going to have quantity x minus h squared over a squared minus quantity y minus k squared over b squared. And that will be equal to 1. And what happens is, is A, A is equal to our semi-transverse axis. And so A squared is a semi-transverse axis squared. In B, B is equal to our semi-conjugate axis. Now, I hope you can remember from ellipses that this equation is very similar to that of an ellipse, except you have a minus sign between the, the x and the y terms. And this is for a horizontally oriented hyperbola. The vertically oriented hyperbola we're going to see probably in problem 13 is where you have the y term first. And so 49 is equal to a squared or semi-transverse axis squared. So a is equal to the square root of 49 which is 7. And you could say plus or minus 7. So we can already start sketching based on this. So I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, draw an x axis, draw a y axis, label as x y, and we know that our semi-transverse axis is seven. So we're going to find our vertices by going seven units to the right, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, and 7 units to the left. So negative 1, 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. And then we're going to mark our vertices right here with these red points. Okay, so those will be our vertices. Next, and let me go ahead and uh, I'll just say vertices they're going to be at x value plus or minus 7 y value 0 okay next thing for the foci well for the foci C being focus foci is equal to, it's the same as Pythagorean theorem. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. In this case, we have c squared is equal to 49, which is a squared, plus 25, which is b squared. So c squared is equal to the sum of both these, which is 74. So therefore, c 
is equal to the square root of 74. And the square root of 74 is a little less. It's between the is between uh, 8 and 9 because the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 81 is 9. So we're going to be a little bit under 9. So if we just continue almost two units to the right, we're going to have our foci. So I'm going to make these little points here between 8 and 9. And these represent our foci on either side. In this case, our foci are outside the vertices as opposed to an ellipse where they, where they are inside. So let me go ahead and put the points there. We'll say foci. They will be at plus or minus square root of 74, comma, 0. And so it's going to be square root of 74, comma, 0, and negative square root of 74, comma, 0. Next, for the slant asymptotes, well, the slope of our slant asymptote is equal to, um, I'll say, slope is equal to our semi-conjugate axis over our semi-transverse axis, which is going to be, in this case, our 7 is going to be our semi-transverse axis. And then our semi-conjugate axis is going to be square root of 25. So this is going to be equal to 5 sevenths. So what we're going to do is, and it's going to be plus or minus 5 sevenths, because we're going to have two slant asymptotes. Now let's go ahead and sketch those out. And the 5 sevenths is a little bit less than 1. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a slant asymptote. And that's going to be, we'll say that's about a slope of 5 sevenths. And then also negative 5 sevenths. So this is what our slow slant asymptotes are going to look look like. And now we can sketch in our hyperbola. I'm going to do that in, in blue. And so we approach the slant asymptotes, but do not actually touch them. OK, there's one side. Let's go to the right side. Come here. Slant asymptotes are very helpful in sketching these hyperbolas. So that's basically what it looks like. Let's go on to our next quantum problem, which is 13. And this time, we have our semi-transverse axis. OK, so, so a squared is equal to 25, and so A, our semi-transverse axis, is equal to 5. And our standard form of this equation is going to be quantity Y minus K squared over A squared minus quantity X minus h squared over b squared is equal to 1. So um, what we have is we are y-oriented. I'm just going to start sketching here to show what that is immediately. So we have x, y, coordinate plane, just as we did for problem 11. And we have our semi-transverse axis is 5. 
So we're going to go up one, two, three, four, five, and down one, two, three, four, negative five. So we can sketch our vertices right here, and we would we would label the vertices. as the points 0, comma, plus or minus 5. Okay, so we've labeled those already. And for the foci, we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared which will in this case be 25 plus 16. So c squared equals 25 plus 16 or 41. So therefore c is equal to square root of 41. And square root of 41 is a little bit bigger than 6. So We'll say our foci, the coordinates for our foci are going to be the points 0, comma, plus or minus square root of 41. So we can label those here. That's going to be 5, 6, negative 6. So a little bit greater than 6, a little less than negative 6. Okay. The last thing is slant, we'll say slope of slant asymptotes. Now, in a y-oriented ellipse, I mean uh, hyperbola, hyperbola, we have a slope is equal to plus or minus a over b. And in this case, we have plus or minus square root of 25 over our semi-conjugate axis, which is square root of 16, which equals 5 over 4. Well, I more correctly, plus or minus 5, 4. So that's going to be, that's going to be our slant asymptote. So that's going to be a little greater than 1. So It'll be something like this. Okay, that's okay. Then from the left, I think it'll look something like this. Okay, that's not so bad looking. And then we can just sketch our, our hyperbolas. We come here from the bottom. So the, the slant asymptotes kind of serve as a guide in our sketching. So that's pretty good. And then from the top half, we go like this. Okay, it looks something like this. Anyway, that's going to be problem 13. Next, on our problem 15, what we have is uh, we have an X first, but we do not have a centered at the uh, origin hyperbola. So we have to make use of this quantity X minus H squared over A squared minus quantity Y minus K squared over B squared is equal to 1. So, 
what we have here is A is equal to square root of our semi-transverse axis squared, which is going to be 4, or plus, or plus or minus 4. And B, B is going to be equal to square root of 4, or 2. And our center, we have, I'm just going to draw, okay, I'll get down lower here. So we have an xy coordinate plane. And we have x plus 3. Well, the standard form is x minus h. And so for this to be x plus 3, we have to have x minus negative 3, which means that we're shifting our center 3 units to the left. And for the y component, we have y minus 1. Well, that, for that to occur, k would have to be 1, so we have to go up 1. So our center of our hyperbola is going to be at this point negative 3 comma 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and just draw this, draw an arrow here, center, negative 3 comma 1. So our vertices are going to have to be at the point of negative 3 plus 4 comma 1 and also negative 3 minus 4 comma 1. Or simplifying, we're going to have negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So that'll be one of our vertices, and our other one is going to be negative 3 minus 4 is going to be negative 7, comma 1. So we can go ahead and draw these if we go to the right for, we have 1, comma 1, there's one vertex. And to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have this point here, negative 7 comma 1. So our, for our foci, c squared is going to be equal to a squared plus b squared. So therefore, c is going to be equal to the square root of both those added together, which is going to be square root of 20. So what we're going to have, our coordinates are going to be our center, 3, plus square root of 20, comma 1, and also 3 minus square root of 20, comma 1. And what is the square root of 20? Well, it's going to be between 4 and 5. So we're going to go negative 1, 2, 3, let's see, that's negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so we just go a little bit after, just outside, and then on the right, thing's going to be right here just almost five so that's what the, that's what our foci are going to look like and finally our slant asymptotes and to do that I'm going to create a little room here our 
slope of slant asymptotes are going to be equal to are going to be equal to plus or minus a b over a so that's going to be 2 over 4 which simplifies to plus or minus 1 half so the slope of 1 half is going to look something like this let me go ahead and and move this out of the way a little bit to leave room for slant asymptotes. So this will be our slope of one half. It's like I lost that. There we go. That's going to be roughly a slope of one half but we have to do it about the center so we go relative to the center about like this okay that's not going to be so bad and like this go above not too neat but enough to draw water hyperbola so we come like this blue and the right side come like this hit the vertex go like this okay, pretty rough drawing but you get the basic picture and uh, 16 is similar in that you don't have a center at the origin the exercise is 17 through 22. Graph the hyperbola using a function grapher. And I'm going to graph in this one, since we have x-oriented hyperbolas in 17, 19, and 21. I'm going to do 17, 20, and 21 to get a variety. So if we go to our function grapher, in this case we have a TI-Inspire CX calculator, and we go get a graph page and to graph hyperbola we go to menu we go to three graph entry edit we go to three equation templates and we go to five hyperbola and yes we want a version one which is an east west since our semi major axis is on uh, is underneath our x term so we get this and we have the thing centered at the origin, so we have x minus 0. In the denominator here, we have 36. So 36 is going to be 6 squared. And then over here, our semi-conjugate axis squared is 16, which is going to be 4 squared. And then we have y minus 0. And there we can graph. So we've, we've done this. We've graphed using the grapher. Now I'm going to just do two more things. I'm going to find a foci, the foci, and the eccentricity. So to get that, go to menu, we go to analyze graph, and eight, analyze conics, and we're going to find the foci first. And we just touch on there, and we get our foci at these coordinate pairs negative 7.211 positive 7.211 so that's going to be let's see 36 plus 16 that's going to be the square root of 52 okay next let's go ahead and find the eccentricity and for eccentricity we go to 4 analyze graph 8 analyze conics and we go to 8 eccentricity we click on there now for a hyperbola you're going to have to have a eccentricity of greater than one less than one would be the eccentricity of a ellipse okay let's go on to the next problem and I was going to do like I said the 
odd number of problems, but this one is also a horizontally oriented ellipse. So I want to go uh, hyperbola. Let's go to to 20, which is y squared over 16 minus x squared over 9 equals 1. So we go here to our calculator, get another graph page, add graph, go to menu, graph entry edit, equation templates, five hyperbola, and this time we would go option two north south, and we have center oriented, so we're going to go uh, y minus zero over our semi-transverse axis squared is 16, so our semi-transverse axis is the square root of 16, which is 4. And then for uh, our semi-conjugate axis squared is 9, and so our square root of that is going to be 3. So 3 squared is 9, and we have x minus 0, and we get this. Okay. So that's that's graphed. Uh, I want to go ahead this time. I didn't do it last time. I want to go find the slant asymptotes of this. So we go to menu, analyze graph, analyze conics, and asymptotes. And we click on this, and we get our asymptotes of negative four-thirds and also positive four-thirds. Does it show up here? There, yeah, we see it right here. There it is. There's our positive four-thirds. So plus or minus four over three. And then we can get our, we can get our foci again. Go to Analyze graph, analyze conics, and we can get foci right here. So we're going to have plus or minus five, so one unit higher and lower. Okay, the last one we're going to look at in this video lesson is going to be 21. And in 21, we're going to be a little bit off center here. But let's go ahead and do the same things we've done earlier, we go to get a graph page, we're going to go get a hyperbola, we go to menu, graph entry edit, equation templates, hyperbola 5, 21 is an east-west, like number 17 was. And we have x minus 0 over 4. Well, 4 is 2 squared. So our semi-transverse axis is 2. And in the denominator here, we had 5. Well, to get 5, we have to take the square root of 5 squared. So what number do we have to square to equal 5? Well, it has to be square root of 5. And then we have y minus 3. So we graph, so we get a horizontally axis hyperbola, but moved up three units. And we, we're going to find our foci and our slant asymptotes. Let's do the slant asymptotes first. We're going to go to analyze graph, analyze conics, and we'll get our, get our asymptotes. And here we have... 1.12x plus 3. Well, x3 is going to be our center. So our slope is going to be 1.12. And 1.12, you should recognize, I hope, is going to be the square root of 5 over 2. And you could look that up, square root of 5 over 2. And then for our foci, we can go to Menu, Analyze Graph, Analyze Conics, Choice 3, which is Foci. Click right on there. We see our Foci at negative 3, 3, and at 3, 3. And then 
just to verify if we go to put in square root of 5 over 2 we should get 1.12 I hope we get yeah rounded be 1.12 so that verifies so anyway, that's all the problems we're going to be going over in this video lesson take a look at these even number problems they shouldn't be too bad good luck and thanks for viewing